wrestling for 12 years now. Uh, I started in Chicago at uh, a school called Windy City Pro Wrestling. Um, I grew up watching it in North Carolina where I grew up. Uh, so I was a big fan of like the NWA, Ric Flair, Dusty Rhodes, the Road Warriors, like that era, the Mid-Atlantic stuff, the Crockett stuff. So I watched it growing up and I went through school, uh, got out of college and was working on being an actor and uh, found out about a school in Chicago where I was trying to get into the theater, uh, the theater scene up there. I wasn't really working out, but I found out about a wrestling school and instead got into that, and uh, that really panned out real fast for me. So that was kind of uh, that was kind of how I got into it. And it, like my training, it only took me like three months to go through the training before I was wrestling. I mean, I still continued to train, but I, then I started wrestling matches like pretty much right away. So, um, you know, I, I, I had... Uh, a little bit of success right away and that got me into it and kept me going so I remember um there was a lot of talking before like you got your training in WCW like the, you were like the most popular indie wrestler out there or it, it just seemed like that at least what I read you know um, yeah um, uh, I, 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 I don't know if I was the most popular I mean I, I was kind of well traveled and um you know I just was lucky enough to work in a bunch of different places and, and have uh, a little bit of a spotlight shine on me. And so, uh, like, I got uh, I got to the point where, like, as far as the independent scene went, I had a little bit of a name, and it was a little, it was feasible to bring me in all the way from California to the East Coast where a lot of the indie stuff was happening. So, so yeah, for a little while I was, I was pretty popular on that scene in that instance, you know what I mean, in that respect. What was it like getting that trial with WCW and getting signed? Um, I felt like I had uh, kind of broken through, like trying to get to my goal. Like my goal was always to make my money wrestling. You know, I wasn't. It wasn't necessarily about being a star or headline in WrestleMania. It was really just earn a living doing what I wanted to do. And so, the first time I was signed with WCW, I had the tryout in um, in LA, a dark match. On Nitro, uh, and um, Kevin Sullivan, Kevin Sullivan hired me after that, and uh, you know I just felt like wow I had finally made it, and I thought like I thought that that was not the end, but I mean the end of the hunt for what I wanted, which was a job. So um, you know I, I quickly found out that there's a lot involved in getting a job, and then a lot involved in keeping a job, and I had gotten the job. But they never really gave me a chance to keep it, so I got let go about eight months later. So, like, uh, what, I thought you might you weren't in the company when WWE bought it. Or? I was, yeah. What happened was, uh, the I was under contract twice. The first time was the dark match tryout, and then um, I was actually going to start on WCW the night that they were in Denver, Colorado, and. Uh, Vince Russo and Eric Bischoff came back to the company and Kevin Sullivan was let go and so um, Vince and Eric didn't know who I was because they had been out of the company when I had my tryout so they didn't know who I was so I was kind of put on the back burner and then I, I went on the road with them for a little while with WCW and uh, they had discussed a couple angles for me and they tried to do one with me and Vampiro that didn't work out and so finally they started cutting costs and I was making a regular salary. It wasn't a developmental deal. It was a regular deal, and so they they told me that I was making too much money for the amount of time, the amount of time I had been on television. And my response to that was, well, you guys wouldn't put me on TV, so how could I earn my money if you guys wouldn't use me? So, so the first time I got let go was, uh, I want to say. August of, no, no, it was October of 2000, and then the second time I got hired was the match that I had on Nitro, where I got hurt, and that was when I got under a developmental deal, and while I was uh, recovering from the angle with Scott Steiner, WWF bought the company and then fired pretty much everybody, except for like 30 people. What, uh... Like when WWE or WWF fought WCW, like what was going through your head? Well, I just I figured that, like I hadn't had a shot yet, and they didn't. They could have given me an opportunity, 
But they had so many guys at once, and for some reason, they just decided not to keep me on. So, you know, I was a little perturbed. But, I mean, you know, I had had success in Japan, and I had had success on the Indies. And so it was just a matter of going back to where I could work. Like, they wouldn't they wouldn't hire me in WWF, or they wouldn't keep me there. So I just went uh, back to work for Japan and, like, got back on the indie scene and, and kept my schedule going. Do you feel like there is a monopoly in the business right now, or what's your opinion on that? Well, there's, there's only one place where sure money is at right now, and that's WWE, just because they're, they're who they are. I mean, there's stuff that's coming up that's more of a risk, like stuff that, like TNA, we're still in a growing phase right now, and uh, right now with, with television kind of being up in the air, it it's, you know, the future's not set with it. So, I mean, it's a risk. I mean, Japan is an option for guys. So it's not, it's, it's not a monopoly in the sense that there's only one place to definitely make money, but, I mean, it's more unstable on the indie scene, uh working in, in the sense with TNA, trying to get overseas, that stuff's not as stable right now just because everything's growing or everything's uh, in flux, so. Um, like, what, what was your dream? Like, did you have a dream as a kid of being a pro wrestler? And being not a really, not really. I mean, I, I, I grew up watching it, but at the time, like, I never thought I'd be big enough. So I didn't really think about being a wrestler till after guys like Shawn Michaels came around, Shawn Waltman came around. Those guys, like, really showed that it wasn't the size that was important, you know. And then, um, you know, once, uh, once what's called cruiserweight wrestling now, I guess. But I mean, once those guys started coming up and, and showing people that athleticism was an avenue that could be uh, traveled. Um, that was when it was feasible or conceivable that I could actually do this. So, like I said, my dream was only really to earn a living doing what I wanted to do. Like I had fun wrestling, and so I wanted to see if I could support my family from it. And that's something I've been doing now for almost seven years. So, um, if you don't want to answer any specific question, like I asked AJ and I asked every wrestler I ever remember, I asked him about unions and drugs. Okay. In the business, I don't. I just want to just. If you don't want to answer that though, it's cool. We can skip it. Um, well, what are you gonna ask? Cause I don't really have an opinion on union. Okay. Oh, well, Not really. I mean. Like what I would ask is, uh, like after this past week, where, like all these guys lost their jobs in Vince McMahon's company. Right. Um, like, do, do you feel that like helps or like gives more of a cause for wrestlers to form a union? Well, I mean, there's all kinds of reasons why it would be good for wrestlers to form a union, but I don't, I don't know if there's ever going to be an opportunity where everybody would band together and do so. Um, you know, it's not really, it's not really in everybody's best interest to band together. Like the guys that are doing well, they're not really hurting to get into a union. They're okay. So the guys that are struggling with it or the guys that are like mid-level or whatever, the guys that would benefit from a union, those are the guys that would risk the most by trying to build a union because those, if if they wanted to build one, it seems like they'd get let go or the backlash from it would cost them more than anything. So, How about, um, like, uh, you know, the drug abuse used to be really bad back in, the, in, in like, the 80s and back early 90s. I don't know what exactly is going on now. I'm sure there is stuff, but like how has that changed or affected the wrestling business, like the drug abuse? Well, I think, I just think like I look at wrestling in terms of like an entertainment lifestyle. Like you go out and you have a show and then afterwards you've got time to kill before you go to your next show. And so, you know, a lot of it has to do with guys that are working through injuries and so they go to pain pills and then some guys are just you know you're just bored and you're away from your family and it's just a matter of of trying to enjoy your life and so they get into recreational drugs i mean i'm not really into either one so it's hard for me to like comment on why guys do it or what's in their what's in their mind so you know i mean it's 
it's it's as prevalent in wrestling as it is in society. You know, you've got guys that do it and you've got guys that don't. And some guys let it affect their work and some guys don't. You know, like, I'm sure there are guys that are functional users. You know, guys that use and then come to work and you can't tell that they're users. And then they go off in their private time and go do what they want to do. So, but I mean, I, I can't really comment and say that just because that's not where I'm at. So... Have you, uh, like, actively pursued before you went to WCW? Did you try in WWE? Or? Yeah, I had bunches of dark matches, and I've, I went to uh, the WWE camps when they were doing um, dojos with Dory Funk Jr. and Tom Pritchard, and, you know, I've, I've had discussions with Jim Cornette and Johnny Ace and all that stuff, and it just never panned out. They just never really seemed very interested in hiring me, so I went where they were, inter- where they were interested. What about, um, like, like, do you have an opinion of Vince McMahon, or do you not really know him? No, I've never met him. I mean, I've been backstage and worked for his company and done stuff, but, you know, he's a very busy man, and he doesn't get a chance to meet everybody that comes through and gets a dark match or whatever, so, um, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's working hard to try and keep his business going and try and stay successful and riding through the valleys of the business and enjoying the peaks of the business so you know how about like the politics and wrestling has that affected you in any way or well I mean you know I guess it would be a lot easier on me if I was friends with some of the guys that had the power but I mean you know I've been lucky enough to be respected by some guys who have power now where I'm at and and uh you know, I've, I've had things that have gone good for me and things that haven't gone good for me, and I, it's kind of hard to say what was politics-driven and what was business-driven or whatever. So, you know, I, I don't think it's anything's... I don't think I've ever been really affected really negatively or really positive by politics. It's just kind of gone by. What, um... Like, uh, the X Division TNA is awesome. You know, everybody loves that. Uh, do you think like that's gonna be the thing that like takes TNA to the next level? Uh, well, I hope I think so. I think it's just something that's gonna make us different from WWE. I just think that like by focusing on the guys that WWE has kind of never focused on, it just makes us an alternative. So hopefully it'll catch on, and especially you know whenever we get our television situation figured out, hopefully that's one of the hooks that we try and get the new viewers. Uh, interested in TNA with, so I, I hope that's the case. Um, I asked you off camera and all, but now on camera, like, what do you think is going to happen with TNA TV? Um, I couldn't really comment, to be honest with you. I mean, I know what rumors are. I know what rumors are floating around, but um, the bottom line is you don't have a deal until you have it. And so, like, I know what our prospects are. Uh, I don't know if any one prospect is better or worse than the rest. Um, uh, you know, it's just a matter of us showing up for work and, and just trying to do the best product we can, and hopefully we'll get that the uh, the form for that product soon and, and be able to get the the viewers back interested in us and get our you know get back on the upswing like we were when we started with Impact. Was there a feeling like at any particular point in TNA that like the company was gonna go down like? No, no I don't think so. I mean, there's, you know, there's always speculation from the outside that uh, if we don't have TV, we're going to close or uh, when we stop doing pay-per-views or whatever. But internally, there's never been that feeling. And I've never gotten the opinion uh, from the people that are in charge that we were at death's door at any point. So, um, you know, we've just shown up and, and, and done our job and, and tried to put our best foot forward the whole time. And, and they've been very supportive the office people have been very supportive of the wrestlers to do that so uh yeah we've never i've never felt like the the sort of damocles hanging over my head there how about uh what, what is there a wrestler in particular that you really look up to that you like admire that you want to follow their footsteps that really motivates you um well i think in ring wise i was always michaels like he was the guy that got me kind of started and my first couple of years were definitely um not just influenced by him, but I mean, like, I really tried to follow his style or try and do stuff that I thought he would do. Um, you know, I just kind of pick and choose. Like, I, I see guys, I see uh, traits in certain people. Um, 
you know, and I try and add that to myself, like the intensity of like Benoit or Guerrero, that type of thing. You try and add or try and emulate that. Um, you know, uh, guys like like I'm always uh, like the guys that I work with, guys like AJ or Low Key or Samoa Joe. I'm always trying to um, work smart, work smart. Like I've seen them work smart. Like they've always got an idea of what they're doing and why they're doing it. And so it's always uh, one of those things where I try and keep in mind the story I'm trying to tell and that type of thing. So. All right, I only got a few more minutes here, but um, I'll let you go in like four minutes. I'll just ask you like two more questions. Like, is there a rib that you've ever had pulled on you, or a rib you pulled on somebody? Not really. Nothing that's like tape worthy. You know, just silly stuff. You know, nothing really. Um, like, what's it like, uh, backstage in TNA? Like, what's the atmosphere like? Um, just, you know, we're, we're happy that we're getting a chance to work, you know? I mean, for a while, it was, like you said, there really was just WWE, and so when TNA came around, and we were hopeful that it was going to continue, and we've been lucky enough to continue for now three years, and so, um, I think that we're just trying to stay positive and, and be ready for the big breaks that are going to come around for us. So it's it's fun, man. It's really, I feel like it's a it's a family. Like we're all there helping each other out and trying to support each other. And um, like I've got a lot of good friends in that locker room. So I'm I'm real happy that they're all doing well and that we're all part of something that I think could turn into something big. And like you worked in Japan, what um how does Japan different from the American wrestling style? Um, it's more of a athletic contest over there. There's not so much storyline. Uh, there's not so much soap opera involved. It's a lot less entertainment in the sense of uh, character. It's a lot more athletically driven. And it's taken a little more seriously in Japan, I think. it's uh, uh, The wrestlers are, are definitely viewed with higher respect over there than they are here, I think, by the fans anyway. Where else have you wrestled that you really enjoy? Uh, well, I've, I've pretty much wrestled all over. I mean, England, Ireland, Puerto Rico was fun when I was down there. Uh, I've done some shows in Canada that were really good. Um, you know, J- I mean, Japan is really the only place that I've done extensive touring of, uh, and really, I like that a lot. I mean, that's always been fun, and it's always been a challenge to go and do well there. So. Is it rugged touring over there? I've heard the stories like travel on the bus all over yeah. the place. Yeah, I mean, I've done some really long bus rides. And, uh, like, I've done, uh, I've done, I did a tour where I wrestled, uh, like, 22 matches in 25 days. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it can, it can be a little strenuous. But, I mean, you know, it's what you want to do. And I'm just having fun doing it. I mean, you know, it's. The work is really the travel. I mean, the fun part is the actual wrestling, but I mean, going from town to town and setting up and getting ready and working out, that's like the work of it. That's like the preparation. And then you go out and you get to do what you want to do and in the ring, and that's the fun part to me. So. Is there any other questions you think I should ask you or some on your mind? No, man, you pretty much covered... A lot of stuff. It's your stuff, man, yeah. Um, like, how about the creativity in wrestling with the writers? Like, do you feel that... In, in both companies or in TNA, do you feel like there's room for improvement? Or well, sure. I've, I feel like none of us are hitting, like, the perfect... We're not. None of us are hitting home runs with every angle we ever do, but, I mean, I feel like in TNA that the creative guys, the guys that are doing the booking, um, really uh, take advice or they listen to the wrestlers and the wrestlers... Like, I've been very lucky to have a very good back-and-forth relationship with the guys that have been doing the booking, and I've made suggestions. Sometimes they use them and sometimes they don't. Um, but you know, I feel like, uh, if it's my career that I'm influencing, I'd like to have a say in it. And at least they've listened to me and, um, you know, they've, they've given me an opportunity to voice what I think would work and what I think doesn't work. And they've listened and they've given me advice and criticism. And, um, you know, I feel like it's a real back and forth thing between the creative people and the wrestlers there at TNA. So I'm, I'm real happy there like that. All right. Thank you very much. Sure, man.